The American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. I'm Roger Cooper. Today's program focuses on the advanced technology that's being used to replace lenses that have been damaged by cataracts, as well as the newest options for people with aging eyes. First up, we'll get a quick overview of the progression of lens technology over the last decade. Next, we'll learn about cataracts and how to prevent them. Later, a look at interocular contact lenses. Who are the best candidates and how is the ICL implant inserted? Then, a segment investigating the advantages of multifocal lenses. And finally, a report on the beauty of accommodative lenses and what the future will look like now on the American Health Journal. Cataract surgery has progressed dramatically over the years. We asked Dr. Roger Ohanisian of Harvard Eye Associates about the history of this sight-improving procedure. Ophthalmology has really progressed quite a bit. The, uh, the procedure had been one that years ago when cataracts had developed, and uh, a needle was placed against the surface of the eye and then within the eye to uh, push the lens back into the back part of the eye. After that was done, a pair of eyeglasses were given that, uh, that took the place of the lens. It wasn't as good as the patient had prior to the development of the cataract, but at least it was better than the opaque image that they had uh, at the time of the cataract. So it, it has evolved to the point where now, uh, cataract surgery is being done that will replicate the condition that you had prior to the development of the cataract and actually even when you were quite youthful. Small incision surgery started really with the phaco emulsification back in the uh, 70s where we made a small three millimeter incision into the eye and found that uh, we would then have to expand it to six millimeters to be able to put the lens implant in because the lens implant was six millimeters in diameter. Later on, a representative of the lens companies developed a lens that could fold and could be placed in through the three millimeter incision. We found that that reduced the astigmatism tremendously. In addition to that, we found that there was um, less, that less trauma to the eye and the eye survived the surgery much better with far fewer risks and complications. Well, we've now gone from that point that we've been able to use small incisions to reduce down even from the, uh, the three millimeter size down to one and a half millimeter and even uh, one millimeter uh, incisions that we can take in. And that also increases, further increases the, the uh, viability of the eye. The, the, cornea, um, the cornea itself survives that procedure much better than when it is the larger incisions. Now, at this point in time, I think there's, uh, uh, aside from the university, um, our group is the only one that is doing the, uh, this small incision surgery because it is technically demanding and there is a certain degree of, of uh, learning curve. The horizons for eye care now are limitless. We have LASIK that we perform on patients to be able to reduce their need for glasses or eliminate them entirely. We can make lens implants uh, within uh, the place where the cataract came from or even in patients who have the need for a change in lens so that they can be able to see all of their distance, intermediate, and reading vision on their own. For those people who have had cataract surgery and lens implants previously that did not have that ability, we have newer lens implants that are becoming available. And we also have other interocular contact lenses that we can place inside patients' eyes to be able to allow them all these uh, ranges of vision. For people who have different disease processes, macular degeneration, there are lens implants that are becoming available that have, are like small telescopes that can allow them to enhance the available vision that they had. So it's the surgery uh, element of within eye and eye, eye techniques has really improved tremendously. When we do cataract surgery, we of course take the cloudy lens, which is the cataract. We go in, 
dissolve it, remove it, and we replace it with an artificial lens. That artificial lens for decades has been a single focus lens, meaning it sees a distance, but it doesn't see up close. With the use of multifocal lenses, we are now able to get vision for far away as well as up close, many points in between. And multifocal refers to having multiple points of focus, far away, up close, many points. And the single focus lens that we use in, for decades in the past only has a single point of focus, which is the far away distance. You're watching the award-winning American Health Journal. More than half of Americans over age 65 have some degree of cataract development with a decreasing loss of vision. We spoke with doctors Roger Ohanesian and Paul Park of Harvard Eye Associates who discuss cataract surgery, astigmatism, and prevention. Cataract is a progressive uh, process. Everyone will get it. And as we age, the clear lens of the eye becomes yellower and thicker. And the uh, main uh, problem that people will have is that of clarity, and they're going to have, uh, they're going to see glare uh, as the cataract uh, progresses. Now, this is correctable by glasses, but after, after the cataract matures uh, a certain level, uh, no amount of uh, spectacle correction will correct the, um, uh, the vision completely. Prevention of cataracts is something that can be done by each individual. You can wear sunglasses when you're outside. We do know that the sun is one of the risk factors for cataract formation. Smoking is another risk factor for cataract formation. Sunglasses in particular are ones that can be tinted with special filters to protect from the harmful rays of the sunlight. It's probably one of the best of the ways that you can prevent that. Other things you can't prevent. If you're from northern European stock, you, you can't change that. If you develop a, a different disease for which you need to take steroids, steroid treatments will also make cataract formation develop. But of course, if you're taking steroids, you have a reason to take steroids, and many times it's necessary. Other disease processes will cause uh, cataract formation. Prior retina surgery often will develop into, uh, patients will often develop cataract formation. Chemotherapy will often, uh, in patients, they'll develop cataracts. Astigmatism refers to a steepening uh, or irregular curvature of the front surface of the cornea. Now, even after cataract uh, surgery, the vision could be diminished if there is an uh, increased amount of astigmatism. Therefore, if there is a great amount of astigmatism, it, is, it helps the patient to get the cataract removed, get the new lens in, and correct the astigmatism by uh, making uh, uh, correction to the uh, existing cornea during the time of the cataract surgery. The American Health Journal presents a medical message, a weekly announcement of important events of interest to the community. Insertion of an interocular lens is the most commonly performed eye surgical procedure. We spoke with Dr. Diana Kirsten of Harvard Eye Associates to learn about interocular contact lenses. Who are the best candidates and how is the ICL implant inserted? The interocular contact lens corrects patients who are too nearsighted to have LASIK. In fact, the, the bulk of the first patients having it done are those patients who've wanted something for years but couldn't have LASIK because they're too nearsighted or their corneas were too thin. Um, so that's one of the advantages. The other advantage is that you're not removing any tissue from the patient's eye. You're simply inserting a you know, very thin uh, contact lens into the eye behind the pupil but in front of the patient's natural lens. That implant can be removed later. If a bifocal intraocular contact lens comes out in 10 years, you could have your current lens removed and the new one inserted. Um, LASIK has trouble with dry eyes, especially in a, a dry place like Southern California. Uh, the intraocular contact lens does not cause dry eyes at all. And it seems in most of the studies that the clarity and the sharpness of the vision, especially for the, the more nearsighted people, is better with the intraocular contact lens. Implantable contact lenses are lenses designed to replace the glasses or, or contact lens power inside the eye. And at this point are mostly used for people who are not good candidates for 
uh, LASIK surgery or other laser correction. Uh, implantable contact lenses uh, provide a very high definition detail vision that sometimes lasers can't for people who are extremely nearsighted or uh, possibly those who are farsighted in the not too distant future. Implantable contact lenses work by taking the spectacle or uh, contact lens prescription that a person has and putting it inside the eye. So it's like having a contact lens that you never need to think about, constantly working and allowing the eye's natural lens of a young person to focus far and near for reading and distance without glasses. Because it's a type of lens implant and uh, it is placed inside the eye like a contact lens but inside, it can actually be removed and replaced later if the eye should change or the future should bring some difference in vision. And it's very gratifying to see these lenses work in our patients. We now see people who come in just a few days after surgery who'd been told before, sometimes several times, that they're not a candidate for any procedure. And to see them come in and, and have a new perspective on the world, it's just very gratifying. What I love about the intraocular contact lens is the clarity and the precision of it. It's optically an excellent lens with exceptionally clear vision. This is what the intraocular contact lens looks like. The optic is the central round part and it's extremely thin. It's only 50 microns in um, thickness and it fits right in front of your natural crystalline lens. It's vaulted so that the lens itself, the contact lens, does not touch your natural crystalline lens. The front of the eye has been filled with a kind of a gel and that helps uh, the implant to unfurl very, very slowly. And basically, as you see here, uh, small openings made into the peripheral part of the eye. This is exactly the same incision we make for cataract surgery. And it is a self-sealing uh, incision, so there's no sutures or um, irritation from this incision. This shows the implant being inserted. The implant rolls up into a, a very small tube that goes into this three millimeter incision and it unfolds very slowly. And the implant has these little tabs, it has four tabs, and the surgeon tucks those tabs under the iris. First, uh, some gel is put in the front of the eye to lower the implant down more towards the uh, plane that we want to have it at. And next you'll see the haptics are the small tabs placed under the iris. So here the tabs are being placed under the iris and once the lens is inserted a solution is put in to make the gel come out of the eye and then myocol is in injected. This is a solution that makes the pupil constrict and the procedure is essentially finished. Asthma, sleep tips, and how dark chocolate can affect your blood pressure. All this and more on the American Health Journal's Health News. Read some interesting health stories you won't see every day. Just go to thedoctorshow.com and click on Health News. At age 40 or older, most patients find it increasingly difficult to put things into focus. But now there are options of either bifocal glasses or now implanted multifocal lenses. Dr. Edward Kim explains the differences between the two. Well, they're similar in the sense that if you have a piece of chocolate cake on a table on one side, and if you have a piece of chocolate cake with a big dollop of ice cream on top, yeah, they're both desserts, but this one's got a lot more. Well, bifocals are like the, the chocolate cake on this side. It gives you distance vision. You search around through the glasses to find the distance vision. You search around through the bottom part of your glasses to be able to see up close. But the multifocals are like this piece of chocolate cake with the ice cream on top. It allows you to simultaneously see far away and up close. Now, you might say, now wait a minute, how can that be? How can you see both far away and up close at the same time? Well, my colleague from Northern California, Dr. David Chang, had a beautiful analogy which I'd like to share with you. He said that if you carry on a conversation, you and I have a conversation, and there's background music playing, well, we can still carry on that conversation and listen to it and tune out the background noise. But if we wanted to, we can ignore the conversation and listen to the background noise. So 
simultaneous inputs can be filtered depending on what the brain wants to do. That's the beauty of the multifocals. It can do that. And the brain just picks out the clear image automatically. A bifocal implant is an implant that a patient can have after cataract surgery that allows them to see distance and near. And it's a revolutionary thing because in the past, we didn't have the ability to give patients good binocular distance and close vision. Well, the first implant that was available that corrected presbyopia or the reading glass problem was crystal lens. And that's been out over two years. So that was the first lens that we all had experience with. And about a year later, Restore and Resume uh, were introduced. And they're a different model. They're an actual bifocal uh, implant in that the lens itself has two powers of focus in the lens. Restore and Resume are categorized as multifocal lenses in that they both provide excellent distance vision and they both provide good near vision. They are, however, different in that they are made by two different companies. Uh, Restore is made by Alcon and Resume is made by Advanced Medical Optics. Their design is different and they achieve their near vision in slightly different manners. The Restore lens allows people to see a little bit closer, more finer detail than the Resume lens. The Resume lens is set to see a little bit further out, for instance, the computer or playing the piano music, that kind of thing. Uh, so the, the optics are slightly different, although they both see well for distance. There are some downsides with multifocals as with any a new technology. Uh, the most talked about is uh, the downside of halos that people experience at night. Now you see these halos around light sources, in other words a street lamp, headlight, and they are described by our patients as being a little bit of a glow around the lights. They're not large enough to obscure the vision and you don't see the halos during the daytime, but you may see them at night. However, over the course of time, patients report that they don't see them anymore. And that's a process called neuroadaptation. And this is very similar to uh, hearing the fan on the air conditioner or the traffic sounds that you might hear initially, but you pretty much don't hear it after a while. And the brain, again, learns to adapt to that. In the future, we certainly see that we can place a, a multifocal lens implant in patients who have already had the standard lens implant without exchange to give them the ability to see up close. Of course, we have many patients who have had the standard lens for the past two or three decades now, and a lot of them now want the multifocal lenses, and they're coming to our office and asking for an exchange. They want to upgrade. Uh, yes, we can do them, but that involves uh, a considerable amount of surgery to exchange the lens, and it may not be appropriate for every patient. We'd like to hear from you and what you think about the American Health Journal, any topic suggestions or comments about our doctors. Email us from our website, www.thedoctorshow.com, or call 1-800-303-3200. Now, with the help of Drs. John Hovhannisian, who explains monovision, and Dr. Roger Ohanesian, who explains the accommodative lenses versus LASIK surgery, we'll have a clear understanding of these available procedures that can improve or restore our vision. After the age of 40, most people's eyes start to lose flexibility like the rest of our bodies. The internal focusing lens of the eye when we're young is very flexible. It adjusts its shape and its power so that we can see up close and see far away without ever thinking about it the lens loses that flexibility and therefore we start to lose our clarity way up close and gradually it becomes further and further away that we can see things sharply. When the eye loses its ability to focus at distance and at near, we need some other way to give depth of focus. And one way that we've done in the past with LASIK and with contact lenses for decades is called monovision. Monovision is the idea that one eye is stronger for distance vision and one eye is stronger for reading vision. The two trade off because the brain has an ability to switch for most people without difficulty and for many of them they can see both without glasses at all. Lens implants in the past were a device that was a fixed focus lens that would go inside the eye to replace the eye's natural lens after cataract surgery. And although these lenses worked, they were a fixed focus. And so people could not see both far and near. They could see 
either one or the other. People had great difficulty without glasses to see up close. Newer lens implants, accommodative implants, are designed to actually be flexible. And once they go inside the eye, again they go in the very same place as an ordinary lens, inside the capsule of the original lens of the eye. Once these implants are placed inside the eye, they're now attached through the mus to the muscles and the tendons that allow the eye to flex and focus when we're younger. And because the lens flexes, it allows us to see both far and near. Accommodative lenses are designed to attach to the eye the same way our own natural lens attaches. Uh, during cataract surgery, the lens of the eye is removed, but left behind is the capsule or the skin around the original lens, and that is attached to the tendons that attach to the muscle inside the eye that helps the lens to focus. So that ciliary muscle can move this capsule, this skin of the lens, and with an accommodative lens inside, the lens can actually alter its shape to focus both far and near. Never needs maintenance, it never needs replacement, it's part of the eye and there it will continue to focus forever. And we have several designs of these implants now, and we've learned from testing that they actually do flex backward and forward, and they give people a seamless ability to see far and near. The ideal lens implant is one that allows uh, the person who has it to see far away, in between, to see their computer or their, uh, their handheld computer or cell phone, and to see things way up close. And accommodative lenses come closest to offering that because they have a, an endless range of, of in-between because of the muscle power inside the eye. Accommodation is the action of the lens to be able to let you see from distance all the way to close. You really only need three units of power to see from distance to close. And so the flexion of the lens inside the eye gives you that. When you're young, of course, the lens can become far more spherical but as you age, the lens develops changes within its metabolism, and it's sort of like a, the back window of a convertible. It becomes stiffer, and it turns yellow. When it becomes stiffer, it doesn't become as round anymore when you, when you want to see something up close. And consequently, you lose that ability to see up close, and you finally get uh, eyeglasses that you have to wear. A crystal lens is a uh, lens implant that is a very flexible lens implant. And it simulates the action of the eye, and particularly of the lens of the eye, enable, enabling you to be able to see distance, intermediate, and reading. And that's the function that the lens has in our human eye. It differs from LASIK, because many patients say, why do I choose this instead of LASIK? And the reason is, that it gives you that distance, intermediate, and reading in both eyes. Whereas when LASIK is performed, it really gives you close vision in only one eye. So therefore, a crystal lens is many times a, a good substitute for uh, the, the uh, LASIK. Watch the award-winning American Health Journal, the show that brings you the latest information on prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and research from doctors right here in Southern California. Watch the American Health Journal each week on KVCR. The future of improving and restoring vision to the human eye is constantly evolving and developing, especially with new and innovative procedures that make every day a clear day. Here to tell us what's on the horizon, are doctors John Hovinesian, Edward Kim, and Diana Kirsten. New lens implants are being designed and on the way toward approval by the FDA that can actually be adjusted for their power after they're implanted inside the eye. These lenses, once they go in, have chemicals built in that allow a laser to, in selective areas of the lens, adjust the curvature and shape of the lens so that if, for example, healing of the eye changes the way someone sees, or if, for example, uh, in the future the vision changes, it can be adjusted after surgery. So this is very promising. Another development in accommodative lens implants that's particularly promising is a new design that actually has two lenses built into one. Just as camera lenses with multiple elements take better pictures than camera elements with fewer elements, this lens will provide more range of focus and a greater ability to see closer and further 
than older versions of accommodative lens implants. The FDA is looking at these technologies now and probably within the next year or so will give some approval for their use in ordinary people. The multifocal lenses of the future may be placed in patients who already have had a standard lens implant so that they too can achieve the benefits of uh, multifocal lenses. These are called piggyback lenses. In other words, we add them on, piggyback them on to their existing lenses. And that can be a very simple procedure. Well, I think with cataract surgery, we're going to find technology leading the way. Um, right now, we have three types of bifocal intraocular lenses. Uh, I think they will continue to improve. What all of us are waiting for is an intraocular lens that truly changes shape, changes shape like our natural lens did when we were, were young. Join us next time when the American Health Journal brings you more in our ongoing series of reports for your better health. If you have questions about today's topics or for the doctors you've seen on today's show, you can contact us at 1-800-303-3200 or log on to thedoctorshow.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Roger Cooper, for the American Health Journal. If you would like to order a tape or a DVD of today's American Health Journal show, please call us at 800-303-3200.